Hello and welcome back to the Woodshop Life. I have a couple of simple pens to make. We've got to do some engraving samples on them for a potential customer. So I'm just going to quickly turn some beach pens. They're plain as can be, but I want to run through the process with you and show you how to make a pen if you've never made one before. First thing we're going to need is some wood. I've got some wood which I've cut to 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That's a little bit more than three quarters of an inch square. And I've got a mark on here which is just a little longer than the tube in the pen kit. So I'm going to run that across all of these. And then another mark. I'm going to cut this on the miter saw. You can use a band saw or whatever you prefer as a method to cut this. I know that my miter saw is going to cut me a three millimeter wide slot. Somewhere around there. This is just for rough cutting, so it's not needing to be too precise. And then we'll do another pen blank mark here. If you're cutting on a bandsaw, obviously your line is going to be much shallower. I definitely recommend cutting on a bandsaw with a mitre guide rather than just going for it. Before we go cutting these, I just want to put marks on them saying this is going to be one going that way and one. This way we'll get the grain lining up when we assemble our pen kits on the lathe. You want to make sure your fingers are well and truly clear of the blade. You don't want the wood to catch and pull you into the blade. That wouldn't be much fun. When using the miter saw, I like to stop the blade below the wood. That way you can't catch the wood as you come back up. So Taron has the Record Power SC4 chuck set for our lathe. And I'm going to take off the included jaws because we have the pen drilling jaws. There's lots of jigs you can buy for holding pens vertically in a drill press. Take lots of setup and such and you're not guaranteed to get them vertical. So I figure the easiest way to do it is actually on the chuck and it's cheaper to buy the record power jaws, assuming you already have the chuck that is, than it is to buy one of those jigs or even build one. So I went with the pen drilling jaws. There's every other chuck manufacturer, Axminster, Nova, um, everyone else has drilling jaws that'll hold your pen blank to drill it nice and concentrically. Now I think this is the better way to go simply because if you're going to be drilling, why wouldn't you do it on a lathe which is going to spin it concentrically relative to the other work you're going to be doing. We have a Record Power CL3 lathe which is a fairly beginner model lathe. But does pretty much everything we want. It's not variable speed, it's just a set of pulleys. So you get that on reasonably tight. Lock down the grub screw just to make sure it doesn't go wandering off on us. Now we get a blank which we've cut and we're going to install that into the jaws. Because it only has two jaws it doesn't really matter if your piece is square or rectangular or whatever. We don't have any fancy drill bits. We're just using regular, not very good quality seven millimeter drill bits. You don't need anything fancy for this. And we'll just bring the drill chuck along until it's just about touching. Back it off a little bit. Lock it down in place. Now I'm gonna drop the speed on my lathe because I do have it on the second highest speed. Probably go down to something mid range. Make sure you back it out occasionally so that you can clear the chips, especially if you have a fairly waxy wood. Beach is a very, very dry, crumbly wood, so it's not quite as critical. But if you're using something like Sage Toba or an acrylic blank, you're going to want to back out a lot more frequently. Because we only have a relatively small lathe, the, drill, the quill doesn't actually extend out far enough to go all the way through a blank, so we just bring it through and then keep on going. 
and that's completely clear. I can see looking down through the chuck jaws when the drill bit has extended out and has made it through the other side of the wood. So that's one done. Now we just need to do the rest. Before we can assemble our pen tubes to the wood we've just drilled, we've got to get them scuffed up a little bit. So a little bit of sandpaper on the brass tube just gives it something for the glue to mechanically key to as the polished brass is very pretty, but not very effective. So you can either do it flat on the table or you can just get sandpaper in hand and give it a bit of a twirl. Something I like to do, which I don't see too many other people doing, is to get a little bit of plasticine and just squeeze it off so it blocks the end of each tube. So when you glue up, you don't end up with any glue in your pen barrel. Now, you can buy barrel trimmers which will clean up the inside of the pen tube, but they only really do the seven millimeter slimline ones. So what if you're doing a big pen? Well, you're pretty much out of luck at that point. So as the doctors say, prevention is better than cure. And finally, we're ready to do our gluing up. We have our Sona Acrylate Glue. This is from Hobby King. They're one of the cheapest suppliers worldwide. They have local warehouses, so you don't really have any trouble finding them. I like to do a good bit of slather along the tube and then a bead around the entrance and then maybe a little drip just inside. And then we're aiming to put it in and give it a little bit of a twist as it goes down, just to try and spread as much glue as possible across the tube. We don't have a barrel trimmer, but we do have an oscillating belt sander. So I'm able to just push these up against until we see brass showing through and just remove the rest of that away. This fence is set to be perfectly square, so let's get to it. Then it's just a matter of making sure we mount these with our arrows facing towards each other. Okay, so I've got this rough turn now, and time for some sandpaper. I have now set the pen up in the laser. We've got some plasticine holding everything in alignment so that the barrels don't rotate. So when we do our final finishing, we're not gonna end up with any lips or anything. I've got it held up by plasticine back here and on the tip of the mandrel. That way we should be fairly level and I've got the laser head set to approximately the center of the pen. So when we do our engrave of the name, it will hopefully end up pretty centered there. Now we're gonna apply our friction polish by first soaking it, and then we'll buff it with some wet compound and then just plain paper towel. Now we get to press the pen together. So this is a pen press which I made in a previous video. You'll be able to find that in the description. Very easy to make, very simple, and very effective at putting together a pen. There we go, that's our pen finished. It's all assembled, laser engraved. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hope you enjoy making your own pens. Thank you very much for watching. I'd love it if you could hit subscribe down below. Hit the bell for notifications. If you've got any ideas for the pens, suggestions for beginners, anything else, leave a comment below. Thank you very much. Would love it if you leave a like on this video. Have a fantastic day.